The CDC is now recommending that you pummel the absolute fuck out of that subscribe button. Beat it within an inch of its life. This is a public health crisis. Make sure you do your part and help stop the spread of people not being subscribed to this channel. It just makes common sense. Hello, my precious little eggies. Pardon my voice. We really do be out here recording voiceover in my office with the C word that YouTube doesn't like very much. I figured today would be an excellent time not to go outside and shoot, but to talk about editing. I kinda edit a lot and recently some of my friends were commenting on how fast I edit so I figured I would share some of the things I do with you. Let's get right into the tips, I don't want to waste your time so let's uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're gonna start off with one of my favorites that I feel like none of my friends knew about. If you make your text elements in Premiere you're probably used to going to the graphics panel and using these two buttons here to center your text. Well that is cringe, let me show you something better. You could hit those aforementioned two buttons over here or you can hold control Control or command to bring up the grid and automatically snap it right from the editing window. That saves a whole lot of time, especially when we know Premiere kind of bugs out when you're switching between those panels too much. Love you, Premiere. Mwah. You'll never have to flick these two nipples again. You can thank me later. And I almost forgot, this works with photos and videos as well. I don't ever want to see something not centered again, you big sexy idiot. If you use the razor tool to cut up your footage and hold the shift key, you'll cut down every line of video and audio. Cut my life into pieces! This is my last resort! Let's talk audio for a hot second. First of all, you can apply default audio transitions to the ends of clips by hitting Control Shift D or Command Shift D. This is also true with video, you can do Control D or Command D. That saves a lot of time, you don't have to go into the effects menu. You can also control a clip's audio gain by hitting the letter G on the keyboard to bring up the gain menu. And this one is super helpful. If you're one of those people like me who plays around with the gain of a clip by just dragging this line by the waveform, you can actually control it with the bracket keys. Open and close brackets will increase or decrease that gain right there so you can have a super precise move as opposed to just clicking and dragging it with the mouse and getting so fucking frustrated when you want to just lower it a little bit and you accidentally drop it down to minus 36. This one is pretty obvious, but some of my friends didn't know it, so I'm including it in the video. Let's say you imported some media from your camera, but you only want to see the waveform. You only want the audio, you don't care about the video. If you click the waveform icon here on the source monitor, you'll see the clip's audio, represented by its waveform. It's perfect if you're looking to grab a specific sound out of a clip. And a bonus tip right here, if you want only the audio to go onto your timeline, you can drag from the waveform icon here. And same thing for video, if you only want the video, you can drag from the film strip. I spend an awful lot of time resizing my audio and video tracks while I'm editing. Now you can just click and drag to resize them, but here's a couple of alternatives for you. If you hover your mouse over just the audio or just the video tracks and hold shift and then scroll your mouse wheel, you can resize all of them at once. You can resize these tracks independently by holding alt and then scrolling on the mouse. But hey, let's say you're on a laptop and you don't have a scroll wheel on your mouse. I got your back too, but I gotta ask, how do you hot swap between the super shotgun and the ballista? Use the Number keys? Hmm. If you hold Alt and press plus or minus on the keyboard, you can resize all of your audio tracks. If you hold Control or Command and press plus or minus, you can resize all your video tracks. Side note here, my computer gives me the Windows error sound when I do Alt plus or minus, so that must be some shortcut for Windows as well, but it does work in Premiere, so that's all that really matters. Kinda sounds like jingle bells. Tis the season. Last and kind of least in my opinion because I don't really use this one ever. If you hold shift and press plus or minus you'll expand or collapse all the tracks. Alright let's move on to some more general things that you can do to your clips. First off if you hold alt or option and drag the clip to another layer of audio or video you'll immediately create a duplicate of that clip. You can move a clip up and down the video or audio layers by selecting the clip, holding alt, and then hitting up or down on the keyboard. Keep in mind that you can do this to video tracks on their own, audio tracks on their own, or clips that are linked together. All right, speed duration of a clip. Wow. A lot of people I know do the big right click and click on speed duration and then do their thing. Wow. But did you know that if you select the clip you want to change the speed of and hit control R, you bring up that menu. Wow. Or command R if you're on Mac. I'm on PC. I gotta make a confession here. 10 Speed is Coheed's best song. Also, this is a little embarrassing, but I haven't really used the Rate Stretch tool before making this vid. I don't know why Adobe hides it under the Ripple Edit tool, but if you give it a long click, you'll get a pop-out menu allowing you to choose the Rate Stretch tool. Or you can just hit R on the keyboard. 
That was a dated reference. Anyway, the Rate Stretch tool allows you to change the duration of a clip on the timeline. But what makes it gold is the fact that Premiere will simultaneously adjust the speed of the clip to compensate for its new duration. So let me translate that into English for you. Let's say I have two clips on the timeline. They just happen to be from Doom Eternal, go figure. There's like a 10 second gap between them. I also have this beautiful Owen Wilson wow that I want to put between them. But oh no, Owen is only like half a second. But if you take out the Rate Stretch tool, you can extend Mr. Wilson out to cover that 10 second gap. Premiere will adjust the speed of the wow, and you're off to the races. Wow. Boom. Rate Stretch Tool. I will likely use this tool on every vid I ever make for the rest of time, now and forever. Amen. This one is going to make a lot of my Avid users very happy. I actually learned on Avid, so I still have a little bit of that masochism in my soul. <laughs> Normally, people use the Razor tool to make their cuts in Premiere, but you can actually do an add edit similar to the way you would in Avid. All you gotta do is hit Ctrl or Command K on the keyboard. And just for the record, you can hit play and do this in real time while the video is playing out. Just make sure you've selected the clip that you want to make the cut in. Keep in mind, the Razor tool does work during playback, which is my preferred method. I use Track Select Forward so often when I edit in Premiere. If you're not using it at all, first of all, you're messing up. Track Select Forward is A on the keyboard, and it's very simple. It gives you these two arrows, you click and it selects everything to the right of that point. It's really helpful to move the timeline around and put new sections in. But did you know that if you hold the Shift key while you're using Track Select Forward, rather than selecting everything to the right, you'll only select that one line that you're hovering over. So if for some reason you need to move all of video one but nothing else, there you go. And here's an even sneakier command, and this one we're really going off menu here. If you hit Shift and A at the same time, you get the reverse, so you'll select everything to the left. I guess that's track select backwards. <laughs> if you've been on this channel for a while, then you know that F stands for fucking thing sucks. I'm just kidding, it actually stands for friends who do stuff together. But in Premiere, F stands for frame. Let's say you have a really long clip that you only use like 10 seconds of on your timeline. If you park your cursor anywhere on that clip in the timeline and hit F, it'll immediately bring up that exact frame in the source monitor so you can go back to the source where you found it. It is significantly faster than right clicking the clip, going to reveal and project, then double clicking it and playing back in the source monitor. All right, my precious little eggies, let's finish this up with some general Premiere tips. You probably are familiar with full screening your video using the tilde key, and yes, that's what it's called. The little squiggly line that goes on top of the end is called a tilde. Tilde. You see? I don't know, it feels like when I say tilde, no one knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, if you do control or command tilde, you get a traditional full screen view without the Premiere UI in the background. You can full screen any window in Premiere as long as you can put the blue selection highlight thing around it. No more looking like that squinting old lady meme when you're looking through your media bin. This next one I actually discovered from all the times I accidentally hit the key. It lives right between Backspace, which deletes your clips, and Enter, which renders your clips. I'm of course talking about Backslash. And what it does is it zooms to fit your sequence on the screen, so it'll show everything all the way to the right of your timeline, which come on, let's face it, we all leave garbage over there, and the beginning of your timeline. It's way speedier than mashing the minus button, although I gotta admit it's a bad habit, but that's what I do. <laughs> If you're anything like me, you probably get really annoyed when you have to render in general, but man, when you have to render and then Premiere yeets the playhead all the way back to the beginning of the timeline, ruins my entire day. Don't worry though, I got the solution to your problem. Just go to Preferences, Timeline, and then uncheck Play after rendering previews. When you uncheck that, Premiere will leave the playhead where it is after completing the render. This one is really a matter of opinion, but for me, it's essential. It's the little things that really add up to making you a more efficient editor. Let's say you've been working on a project for a while, maybe it's a documentary, and it's getting a little bit extra thick. You can always trim the fat. See, once a project gets too big, it's gonna slow down and be all shitty. That's a big trademark of Premiere. So if you go up to edit and select remove unused, Premiere will get rid of all of the media that you haven't used at all in the project. Now, if you're a digital hoarder like me, that might make you vibrate a little bit, but it's very helpful to make your project run a little bit better and get rid of footage that you probably don't need. And keep in mind, of course, this isn't deleting footage from your hard drive, it's just removing it from the project. And last but certainly not least, did you know you can sync audio right in Premiere. So I have camera 1 on video 1 and camera 2 on video 2. Right click the clips then choose synchronize. Check off audio and track 1. Then walk away, grab some lunch or something because this is gonna take like 47 hours, that's slight hyperbole there. But when you come back, you're gonna be in the game. 
Okay, so there are a bunch of tips. I didn't count how many. I'll put it in the video title probably, but there you go. Those are a bunch of tips to help you not edit like a stupid poopy doo-doo head. I hope you, I hope they helped. If you knew all these tips, fuck you. I'm just messing around. Of course, I would never say that to you. But in all seriousness, I did want to make a video like this to share some of the things that I've found over the years working with Premiere to hopefully make your workflow go a little smoother. So if you found any of this helpful, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Leave a comment. What's your Premiere tip? Did I miss something? Is there something I don't know that I should know? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear uh, what you do. That was, that was a good take. That's a keeper. Anyway, guys, you know what to do. Hit me up on the socials, Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, blah, blah. If you dig what I'm doing here, make sure you give this video a fat share. That would really be very helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Got a couple, got a couple cool ones under construction. All right, bye. Like and subscribe. Just read the photography. Go ahead.